Hey everybody, Carlos Rodriguez here, author of the book Drop the Stones. Um, the concept of this book is trying to filter life, relationships, people that we know, people that we don't know, churches, denominations, experiences, everything filtered through the story of John 8. This is the story where um, a woman is caught in the act of adultery. Religious leaders bring this woman to the feet of Jesus to try to condemn her, to stone her to death. And Jesus, being the Savior, becomes salvation to this woman, specifically by highlighting, um, you know, that, that incredibly tweetable, quotable um, thing that Jesus said, whoever is free of sin, throw the first stone. And it's just this ultimate epic statement that forces the reader, the believer, you and I, to um, have to internalize what am I doing wrong? What is my sin? What is the thing that you know that I'm struggling with? What is the log in my eye as opposed to the speck in the eye of the other person? So this 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 book is really it's a lot of stories, a lot of invitation, a lot of testimonies, things that have happened in my life, how I've realized that I've had some sin that I have to deal with, that I had some issues that I had to face about myself. And really when I was accusing others, condemning others, judging others, what I was doing was escaping the need for me to address the things that I was doing wrong. So I, I divided the book into three parts. Um, part one is um, us, the religious leader. So how have we church leaders, church members, Christians in general, have become church leaders where we're really good at pointing out the sin in others, but we haven't been able to address the sin in our own lives. And Jesus was the savior to those religious leaders when he said to them, whoever is free of sin, cast the first stone. He was saving them from their self-righteousness. He was saving them from the lie that they actually, you know, were better than this woman. They were not. So it's not denying the fact that she had an issue, it's just denying the fact that we also have issues and we need to address those issues and those problems. So the, the first part is how do we, the church, us leaders, and I use a lot of personal stories, very vulnerable stories about breakups um, in my life and relationship, moral failures, troubles in my marriage, um, and, and the way that uh, that Jesus saved me through all those moments where I was the religious leader and I was condemning others because I wasn't facing this stuff in my own life um, and how to be free of that and then the second part of the story then is us the woman us the people who are that have sin secret sin that we're hiding that we're you know that we're struggling with and how to encounter the Savior how to overcome the religious leaders in order to be faced with this amazing Savior that sets us free from the condemnation from death itself from being stoned to death um, and it's just you know it's a reminder of it's got a lot of stories and testimonies of people from very broken backgrounds and again the book has lots of stories because um, I, I, in 15 years of ministry that I've done and being able to be a local church pastor while always doing um, lots of missions trips and I've been exposed to um, Muslims and homosexuals and and atheists and Christians from different denominations. I've been to many nations and I, I, I've been exposed to the story of redemption and it fits everywhere. The story of John 8 works in every context. So how do we as sinners can be faced with this incredible Savior? That's part two. And then part three then is us, the body of Christ, as the Savior, as Jesus. How can we then save those who have been caught in adultery, those who have been caught in whatever sin they've been caught in. How do we become part of this message of redemption? How do we reach out? And, and of course, I have a blog called happysonship.com, which is kind of the what initiated this whole journey of writing. And for the last three years, what I've done is I've addressed whatever's trending on social media, right? So whatever people are talking about, whether it's transgender issues or, um, immigration reform, whether it's the president or uh, issues between Catholics and Protestants, whatever it is that's kind of going on in social media, what I do is I try to frame it, filter it through the story of John 8, through the sounds of grace, through the story of redemption. How can we respond to what's happening based on how Jesus responded to what was happening during his time? So that's, that's basically what we're doing. So lots of you know, lots of invitations to grace, lots of invitations to face the things that we're struggling with ourselves and how to move forward in it. Lots of, lots of fun stories, lots of, lots of good things, lots of scripture um, based on the story of Jesus, the gospels. And yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. And I hope that you enjoy Drop the Stones. I hope that it blesses you, that you be encouraged, excited, motivated, challenged every once in a while. Um, and that it'll help you and help us and help a, a whole generation. You know, it's obvious right now that 
social media has made it so that we're constantly dividing, we're constantly separating, and this book is really an open conversation about a lot of topics that a lot of people don't want to converse about. And if we are conversing about them, it's more attacking as opposed to talking. So this is an invitation to talk, to talk from the starting point and the end point of Jesus, the gospel, the good news. So I hope you enjoy it. Drop the stones.